So Amen. quick question for both of you. Um, I want to start with you, James, going back to what you said at the start when you talked about Winston Wright. Obviously, you know, Norvell talked about it earlier. Did we lose James? No, I'm here. Okay, James, still there. Yeah, I just had to check something. Okay, perfect, no problem. Turn so, the lights off. There we go. He turns mm -hmm. the lights off. On so you talked about a little bit earlier about Winston Wright, obviously the horrific car accident that he had in Savannah uh, a couple weeks ago. I guess when Norvell talked about it a little bit. Go into, if you could go into a little bit of detail, like for people to understand just how bad it was and how you, know, you talk about it, how there, there's a chance where he may not play at all this season and he may not play again. Like how serious was this car accident? So to give people an idea about it. And then a question for both of you, and I hate to, to transition back to football off that topic, but with him out of the equation for X amount of time, who do you think this will open up the door for in the wide receiver room? I mean, it was, I mean, like, let's put it like, they, they were turning left, mm. and the car ran a red light and was going full speed. It just completely dinged them. And um, they had to use the jaws of life to open up and get some of the guys, get some of the other people out of the car, and his leg is, you know, he's probably going to, you know, this is just me, you know, from what I was told and kind of deducing, um, using deductive reasoning for some of the stuff. He's probably going to have a still rod in his leg. And, you know, those are things that there's a lot of complications that come with any surgery, but in particular, those surgeries. Like, you have infections that you have to do. You have to rehab. You have to hope that everything takes the right way. And, um, you know, any surgery that you have, you know, regardless of if it's like a football surgery or if it's one that was life altering like this, you, um, you got to go back into action. So, like, you got to actually have confidence that everything is going well. So, um, you know, when I was telling everybody, a lot of people took my critiques of Mackenzie Milton to heart in the wrong way, and it, it had nothing to do with that. It just, my man just wasn't, he just wasn't right, and rightfully so. Like, his injury was very traumatic on Mackenzie Milton, and it's very difficult to come back from those things. So I'm looking at the same thing with Winston Wright is that, you know, forget football for a second. Like, my man's – and, again, it's also coming from a guy who, who I, you know, literally my doctor told my family – they asked my family on my birthday if I had arrangements made, like, for, for life or death. Like, so going – when you're – and mine wasn't like that. I mean, I couldn't breathe. But, like, when you think you're going to die, like, your mindset goes to a different place, man. Like, you know, you got to – so you got to come back from that. You got to come back from knowing what your body used to be able to do from a physical perspective and, and knowing that it's going to take a little bit of time for you to be able to go to rehab to get even close to what you were. And then if you aren't what you were having to live in the now, which is a very which is something that, you know, you pray you get to. I'm not old, but you pray to get to my age. I can't get out in the blocks like I used to, but I'm also 38 and I don't have to do it anymore to have to face that when you're 20, 21 years old is um. It's something unique. So that's why I was just telling a lot of fans, like, I get we wanted him. We had high expectations. Mm -hmm. And I think he was going to be an excellent return man and, and possibly the guy to take the top off of the defense, which we haven't had in so long. But at the same time, I mean, it's got to be next man up. And what we what we can do as a fan base is is um is rally around, rally around guys that that did make the commitment to us and make sure that he knows that even though he hasn't played a down at FSU, that he's a seminal. And uh, make sure you take care of, you know, take care of him and, and, and check in on him and, and don't forget about it. Mm -hmm. This is very traumatic. Now, obviously. Yeah. Alan, are you, were you asking that second question, Jason? Yeah, so that's basically now obviously going back from the football side with him being out for an extended period of time. Let's say, let, let's, mm -hmm. let's just assume worst case scenario, he never plays for Florida State again. Obviously, Winston, you're a seminal. We will always support you for that. From the football aspect of it, who now will take – who do you think will get it to take advantage of those reps that Winston would have had through spring ball and into the fall? I think uh, someone that has highlighted the start of spring and I think was already stepping in that direction, I'll be honest with you, because it kind of was a slower start for Winston anyways. The start of spring is going to be um, the transfer from Arizona State, and that's Johnny Wilson. He has been an absolute – stunned to me i wasn't expecting the start for him at all but like i had mentioned a couple of weeks ago 
uh, at the early part of camp, he was my number one guy in that wide receiver room. I mean, yesterday you got to see a lot of those veterans show out and, and have a lot more consistency. But Johnny Wilson has been an absolute stud, and I think that's going to be the guy. If you're looking at – they're definitely a whole 180 and size for sure. And they have different threats. But a guy that's going to jump into the rotation very early for Florida State is going to be Johnny Wilson. He's been excellent in his one-on-ones, combating on the sideline. Um Deep, middle of the field, he had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back catches for uh, 20-yard gains uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, he's a threat. He's a major threat, definitely in one-on-ones. He's just not a Greg Carr, and you throw it to the corner there to him. This is a guy that you're going to be able to use all over the field. And to match him up with some of these taller guys, I mean, that's one thing I noticed, and you probably probably think the same thing, James, that, that the whole conversation of having little wide receivers at Florida State is over. That is gone, and uh, definitely it's, it's about time, absolutely, but that is done. You've got Portier, you've got Malik McLean, you've got Johnny Wilson, you've got uh, um, Jordan Young, you've got some big-time – yeah, you've got – yeah, definitely Burrell, um, Baby Bolden. You know, it, you've got some size at wide receiver uh, this upcoming season, and that's something Florida State hasn't been able to say in a lot of years since going back to maybe Auden Tate and you had Tamara and Terry, but you haven't had, like, a combination of these guys. So, um, you know, it, it's really disappointing and sad, and I hope that Winston Wright – has a, has a really good recovery, and it seemed like Norvell said, you know, he's in good spirits, and I hope to have him back here in Tall Tallahassee soon. Uh, and now now it's next man up, and there's a lot of veterans that showed out on, on this last practice with Ja'Kai Douglas making the best grab of the day. You also had Deuce Span. I forgot to mention Deuce Span. Deuce Span is also not a small guy either. Um, these are some big boys in the wide receiver room and actually made the play of the day, in my opinion. Catch, uh, not the catch of the day, but the play of the day was A.J. Duffy, 50-yard bomb to do span, who's starting to kind of get some clicks there, just like how Greedy Vance has two transfers that are starting to get into a rhythm. So uh, 